It's the Red here. Today is March 13th, 2020. And I'm up at the Abbey. And you know what this stuff is right here? Beeswax. I've been rendering wax now probably for four weeks. Just going through my supplies of cutout wax and cappings and any kind of wax that I've been finding in the honey house, I've been melting. And it's taken a while. I've, I've probably processed these four blocks of, of wax at least at least three times each. Um, this one on the bottom, I still haven't. This probably only two times with this one on the bottom. You can see the color is a little bit darker. These right here, I know I've got these at least four times. And what I'm getting ready to do is melt some more wax. Today is the last batch of wax that I've I've got. I had three more batches to do. I've done two of them already. They're already in the bucket starting to cool. I'm getting ready to, to melt the last one. So what I'm going to do is I'll go ahead and show you how I'm going to melt this last one. The kettle's already heated up. I'm just ready to drop the, the old comb inside of it. And we're going to get another batch done. And what the video is going to be about is what I use this wax for. It's going to be something a little different, but hopefully later on in the video I'll explain it and you will be able to follow along and maybe get an understanding of what I use another thing that I use our wax for here up at the Abbey. So by the grace of God go ahead and get this uh, little job done today melt some more wax it'll take another few more days before we get this video all done but by uh, this weekend it'll be finished. Let's go wrangle and melt some wax huh? So now we're inside the maintenance building Looking at our kettle right here. That's our next bag of wax that we're going to be dumping into the kettle. And let me show you what I've already melted this morning. We got this bucket right here and this bucket right here. We've already got two of them. By tomorrow, these things will be cooled down, all three of them, and we'll be able to render them one more time, getting them to be about the same condition as those guys right there. As you can see, the kettle's already heated up, ready to have our wax dropped in, so let's go ahead and drop it in there. So with our wax dropped in, I'm just going to spread it out a little bit, and as hot as this water is already, and as fine as this wax is, there's a lot of chopped up wax in this one. This one is not going to take long to melt at all. So we're going to close the lid on this and I'm telling you it, it, it's, it's only going to be 10, 10 minutes, 15 at tops and this stuff will be rendered down into one mass. Of course there's going to be a lot of cocoons and stuff in there. So we'll get all that stuff filtered out and when we do then we'll go ahead and drain it into our bucket and let it start cooling all right that should be good enough for, for right now close the lid and check back on this in about 10 minutes a 10 minute time I just ding let's go ahead and check what we look like inside Oh yeah, steam there. Very, very nice. Got the fire turned off. Everything is broken down. I got a different way of putting my screen in this time. I actually roll the screen up this time and stick it inside of the nozzle instead of having it around the entire kettle. I worked that way this morning twice already. It seemed to work really great. And I'll, I'll fish some of this, well, most of this cocoon stuff out with a fish fryer basket. And it'll really help take that load off of the straining of the, the wax and water through this screen once I open up the gate. Let's go ahead and start skimming off these cocoons. The next process I'm using this old fish frying basket and what I do is I'll go through the kettle picking up a bunch of these cocoons and then just letting that 
wax strain out of it. Just like they do when they fry and french fries at McDonald's. And then once I get a good bit of that wax out of there, because you know what, I don't like to waste this stuff. And I'm just going to go ahead and dump it into my little tray right here. And go on to the next batch. This method is a little bit more labor intense, but I think it cleans the wax a little bit better because I leave majority of the stuff in the kettle and a lot of the wax will come out of it instead of me losing it in the cocoons. Now that I got the majority of the big stuff out, I'll use a smaller board to screen the stuff out. That's all the screening that I need to do. I know I didn't get it all out, got a, a lot of it out, but it's not necessary to get a lot of it out because by keeping this screen in here, it's going to prevent the, the nasty stuff to getting inside of my wax. And also, it'll stay inside the kettle and it'll trap a lot of the dirt that way too. So I'm going to go ahead and set up my little net over my, my filtering net over my bucket and we're going to open up the gate. Now as I open the gate, you'll see the water level, water and wax level decrease as well as all the trash start building up along the screen. Now I've removed the gate and just allowing the wax now just to finish flowing out. And you can see this is all wax that's floating out of this kettle now. And there is still a, a lot of wax in here. And because of our kettle is still hot, very hot, it'll, it'll remain in that liquid state oh, for at least 10, 15 minutes. And in that whole time that it's in that liquid state, it'll just be easing out, little by little, our wax. This is all the debris that I caught. That screen inside the, the neck of this kettle really is a great idea. It worked really well. And at this point, I can remove my little screen right here because no more dirt is going to come out. It, it's going to it's going to be trapped inside, so we'll take this off right now. And as our wax continues to come out, I'm going to just go ahead and close the kettle, let that heat stay in there a little bit longer, and we'll get this thing done in about 10 more minutes. Our wax sickle is growing pretty big now, so that means that things are starting to cool down. Heck, let's go ahead and look at inside of the kettle. It's all pretty much down to the end. I'm not interested in getting any more because it's just going to get dirtier. The, the wax just get dirtier. So we'll just call it quits on this one. And we're going to go ahead and close this one up. Our kettle's all cleaned up now. There's the wax that we just rendered. And we're set for tomorrow. So we'll pick this video up tomorrow. We're going to re-render this wax as well as these two right here. And this is all the debris that I took out of this batch. This stuff makes excellent fire starter, compost pile. I mean a lot of lot of good stuff for this other than the dumpster. 
And so we use it for a few things over here. All right, let's pick this video up tomorrow. Now here are three buckets with wax in it. This one kind of, when I was moving the, these, the water spilled over it. This one, not so much. But so what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna go ahead and dump these out and then scrape off the bottoms and go ahead and drop them back into the kettle. And you can see there's some bees in that one. <laughs> and there's one there too. All right, let's go ahead and dump this stuff out and see what we're looking at. Here's our little pancakes. Not bad, not great, but not bad. And we're gonna melt these one more time and clean them up a little bit more. What I have to do before I do that, clean, throw them in the kettle again, I gotta scrape this stuff off the bottom, the dirt off the bottom of these. By scraping the bottom off, it'll help clean it up a little bit. It's good enough. Let's go ahead and bring them into the kettle and start melting these guys down. Already got the water boiling. Well, as you can tell, the kettle is oh, ready to go. <laughs> and this is the wax that we just finished doing. I'm just going to set it in here, get it cleaned up one more time. I don't think it's going to take but 15, 20 minutes to get this stuff melted. These aren't really big blocks. Get it melted down, strain it one more time, let it cool, and these guys will be ready for the next step. We'll check back in about 20 minutes or so. It's already starting to melt. Let me show you a picture of that. Our water was already boiling, so as soon as that wax hit it, it started to melt, and you can see that yellow, yellow coming out. Like I said, it's not going to take long for these this, these little blocks to melt down. All right, we're at about 10 minutes right now. Give or take. And, oh yeah, we're done. So I'm going to put the strainer over the bucket right now. Open up the gate. Let the hot wax come out. Catch whatever trash is in there. Let it cool overnight. That screen didn't catch that much stuff. There wasn't that much in it. A couple of bees that died when they got into that wax when they smelled it. Even in the finer, there wasn't a lot down there. That's good. This, this rendering will come out really nice. Well, looks okay to me. <laughs> we'll find out tomorrow what it looks like. We'll take it out the bucket tomorrow. I'll give you a shot at what that looks like, clean it up a little bit, and that should be good enough for what we need to be doing afterwards. We'll pick this up tomorrow. Well, it's been two days since I came out here and, and to look at this wax. Uh, I had to work all day yesterday getting all these boxes moved up inside of here in preparation for what I'm coming to next. But let's look and see what this looks like. Oh yeah. That looks really, really nice. So, this cover right here that was on top of the wax, somebody had suggested on one of my videos that I should put cardboard or something over it to retain the heat so that way when it cools, you, you wouldn't get any cracks in the surface. That worked really good. That's a beautiful piece of wax. So let's go ahead and shake this thing out of the bucket and see how much we got in there and what it looks like. All right, let's see what we got. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> that is a nice chunk of wax now instead of those three little ones. One beautiful one. Scrape this stuff off of here. Hey y'all. Uh, 
all cleaned up. That's very nice. So I'm going to just go ahead and add this to the pile that we've already got. And uh, let me show you something else too. And here's all the wax. <laughs> all this wax. I haven't weighed it yet, but I'm guessing this has got to be over 50 pounds of wax. All this wax. Oh, this is a, a I forgot when I took the original picture. I forgot to put this block in. These are the, the cappings from our cappings. It's all white. That's why it's such a different color between this and all the rest of them. This is our cappings wax. So, but all this wax is going to get melted again into our kettle and eventually it's going to be used to coat our frames. Well, not this one because it's got drawn out foam on it, but all these other ones that don't have drawn out foam on it. So, that's really going to be the next part of the video, melting all this part, all the wax down, and then how I transfer the wax onto the frames. So, we're going to pick this up tomorrow. <laughs> It's now Saturday morning, March 18th. I'm finally getting around to melting all the wax. Well, not all the wax. This is only about 80 pounds of it <laughs> that I've got in here right now. All right, we're gonna go ahead and melt all this wax down. It's about quarter to seven in the morning right now. I don't know how long it's gonna take for all that wax to get melted down, but I guess we're gonna find out. I'm hoping in about an hour and a half we should be all liquid again, in which case we can start doing our final step, putting the wax on our frames. So we're right about 50 minutes. Let's open her up and see what we're looking like. Oh man, I'm really surprised at that wax. It looks like it's all been melted already. Man, that is really nice. That is gorgeous nice. All right, so now to the nitty gritty of what this video is all about. So you see, I've, I've melted the wax, we had all that wax. So what do you use the wax for? What do I use the wax for? And some of it is used in our candle production in making lotions. In fact, later on, I am gonna make a video on melting the cappings and what we do with that, how they make the, the lotions and the candles, and that'll be down the road, but for today, what we're doing with, with this, our wax today is we're melting those blocks and you've already seen that I've got those things in the kettle and we're melting those those blocks to then put on our foundation so here's your frame with your plastic foundation in it plastic foundation I'm a great big fan of it mostly because when I put the frame of honey in my extractor and spin it out the comb stays on the frame. I've had in the past where the comb blows out, falls out, just from that centrifugal force of the extractor. But with a, a plastic foundation, it will always stay on there. The problem with plastic foundation, bees don't want to build on it. And if you just drop one of these frames with the plastic foundation on it into your box, they might draw comb on it um, and it's no guarantee that they will and the comb that they draw on it often they build that comb off of the frame itself so there's a gap between the comb and the frame and that gap is absolutely terrible if you think you're going to try to spin that because that will blow off the frame as well so to encourage the bees to build on the plastic foundation as well as on the frame itself what we do is we coat it with wax. What I do is I coat it with wax. And for years, I used <laughs> my little crock pot right here. And you can tell it has been very well used. I would, I would fill this crock pot up with enough wax and it would do 30 frames. That, that's what it would take, 30 frames to do one pot. And how I would do it, I'd put the wax in there, melt it, and then I'd use a, a roller, a little foam roller, dip the roller, the wax, the roller into the wax, and then simply roll it out onto the frame without the frame being there, but just on the foundation. I'll just roll it out onto the frame. And it works, it works really great. If you have, you know, less than like 20 hives or so, you can do that, but 
with as many hives as we have now, that that way of doing it is just not efficient enough. So I've come up with uh, the help of other people, this process of melting large quantities of wax, suspending it in water, and then dipping the frame into that suspended wax, shaking it off, and then that's how I'm coating the, the frames with, with wax. Now, speaking of wax, wax is, is a very, very, very precious commodity um, for the bees and for us too, because they only produce wax at certain times of the year, at least my bees only produce wax at a certain time of year because I don't feed them. If you feed your bees, you can get them to produce wax pretty regularly. But since I don't feed them, there's only a very, very small window of wax production. And in that, in that window, you have to be ready for those bees. You have to have all your equipment ready so that they will produce the wax for you. It takes seven pounds of honey to produce one pound of wax. So, in my small way of thinking, if I help the bees by giving them the wax on the frame that they don't have to produce, that honey that they would have used to produce the wax will now be able to be stored inside the, the frames that, that they're going to be drawing out from the wax that I give them. So for me, it, it's, it's a pretty simple choice. Give them the wax, they give me the, the honey. I've got enough wax, I think we can do this. So. The idea of me putting wax on the frames, and having, having the bees draw that wax out to the comb, it's a very, very good fit for, for me. So what I've been doing for, well, it's been three days now, I've been getting all these boxes behind me. These are all the boxes that were in the peacock fence, in the peacock hut. Been bringing them in here, and I've been popping the frames out. And it's, it's really simple, you just take the, the frames and you push on them and boom, the foundation comes out. And I've got all those boxes done, I only have a few left to do. And with the foundation out, then I can take this foundation and then dip it into my wax suspended solution in the kettle. So I think that's all I got about, about that. Oh, one more thing. If you're gonna use your crock pot to to melt wax, you know, like I've done for years. Just a little point of interest. Once, once wax touches anything, it's, it's never gonna be used for anything for that purpose that it was originally designed for again. So like crock pots, you know, I used to make my, bake my red beans in this all the time. Well, you'll never make another red bean in this pot. This pot is finished, it's just for wax, that's all. So I'm going to go ahead and start dipping our frames. I got Brother Austin here with me this morning. He's coming to help me once again because it's a it's a big job. So we're going to go ahead and start, and hopefully by a couple hours we'll uh, have all this job done. So before we start, I'm going to show you the frames that I've already pulled out. These are all the foundations that I've taken out of the frames, and each one of these stacks is about 30 frames. So. You could imagine if I was doing this using my crock pot, how many hours of work it would take to do these frames. Now most of these frames were frames that were previously uh, waxed from when I bought these last year, but since they sat out, they dried up and it's, it's still some wax on them, but because I want to really get these bees to have a good jump on the honey production, I'm just going to redip all of these and let them draw that out. So let's go ahead and set up and dip some of these frames, these foundations. So I'm gonna first I'm going to check to see if our wax blocks have all been melted. Oh yeah, this it's all melted in there. And those are some huge chunks of wax. So there's no blocks in here. So this stuff is ready to go. So what I'm going to be doing is taking my frames Pulling them this way and submerging them into the wax and then shaking that excess off because there's going to be a lot of excess. Those little cell pockets, they hold a lot of wax. So you want to knock off most of it, but you'll leave plenty behind. And then we're going to cool this thing, let this shake it off and cool it. And you'll see 
the wax as it gets onto the brain. Look at this. Wow. And this is just right out of there. It's not even finished cooling off, so there's still parts that are wet, but you can't see it. Yeah, <laughs> just finished dipping the last frame. Actually, I was 10 frames short of dipping all of them because I'm out of wax in here now. In fact, let me, let me grab the camera. I'm gonna show you how little wax is floating on, on that water right now. Now it may appear that there's a lot of wax in here, but as I brush the, the wax off of the surface of the water, you can see it's like 10 thousandths of an inch layer of wax. And there's so little wax in there, it's not even getting on my screen. So I almost got all of those frames done. And I think we used close to 80 pounds of wax today. And I, I, we'll count how many frames it was, but it was a lot of frames. Right, Give you a shot of our last batch of frames coming out of the tank and they just sit out here to dry, cool off, not dry, but cool off. Those are the 10 frames that I ran out of wax before getting to. It was a long day today, and, and, but it worked, everything worked really great. The kettle worked good for the dipping of the wax. It was the first time I ever did it like this and, and I'm very happy with it. Dip uh, 460 frames is how many Dip. I, got, I got 46 boxes that I, I, I've done. Uh, I still have about eight more boxes that I still have to pop the frames in. But look at the look at these frames. I mean, look at the wax on this stuff. I mean, that is like beautiful, beautiful. These bees, they're gonna have it made when they <laughs> when they start pulling this stuff out. And I'm gonna, I'll, I'll probably in another week or so when I go out there and set these out there. Give it another week and do a follow-up on how they're drawing this comb out because I want to see myself. So that's all I got for you this one. Thanks for watching. Keep on watching. I'll be making more. God bless, Mr. Ed. I'm out of here until the next video.